Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Retro and in this video I'm not going to just show the games that came in this week but also the games I bought at the Bonami Retro uh, Game Convention last weekend. We've got a whole lot of games to go so let's get to it fast. First, PlayStation 1, Crash Bandicoot 2, Crash Bandicoot 1, Crash Bandicoot Warped, another copy of Warped, Medieval 2, Parasite Eve 2, Tombi 2, Tombi 1, Final Fantasy 9 and Spyro Year of the Dragon. Next bunch. Crash Team Racing, Street Fighter, uh, no, Puzzle, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Odd World, Nightmare Creatures, Nightmare Creatures, Muppet Monster Adventure, Silent Hill, and Spyro the Dragon 2. Then for the Sega Mega Drive, Paint Games Music Style, Fun and Games, Spider Man and Venom Maximum Carnage, which has a really cool red cartridge, Atomic Runner, Strider, one of the coolest games on the Mega Drive. Sword of Vermilion, The Death and Return of Superman, Strider 2, Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle, Sparkster, and Vector Man. I'm actually still looking for a complete copy of Sparkster for the Super Nintendo. Then some PlayStation 2 DS. First up, Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, Rainbow Islands Revolution, these are all from my own collection by the way, and Rayman DS. Then Dragon Ball Z Budokai, SingStar Legends, SingStar Pop Hits, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, which is of course GameCube, not PlayStation, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy X 2, Killzone Collector's Edition, this is a steelbook, this is actually the first steelbook that ever got released, and the last one is Mario Party 5. Some more PlayStation 1, Destrega, Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, Digimon World 2003, Digimon World 2003, Trap Runner, Trap Runner, and two more Digimon World 2003. This guy had a whole shipping box full of Digimon World 2003. A pile of mixed stuff. God of War Chains of Olympus. I have the press kit for this game, but not the official retail release, so add up to my collection. Same goes for Medieval Resurrection and Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Then we have Pokemon Ruby for the Game Boy Advance. Afterburner Complete for the Sega 32X, which is an expansion for the Sega Mega Drive. Doom for the 32X and Mortal Kombat for the 32X. Then for the other Sega X, Sega Mega Drive expansion, the Mega CD or the Sega CD. Power Factory, My, uh, Final Fight CD, Night Trap, which started, uh, uh, how do you say, politics went crazy over it. Which actually started the PG rating, I believe. Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin. Sonic CD, and then for the Sega Saturn, Mega Man X3, which is one of the rare Saturn games, and really not the best version of Mega Man, but still it's a great game for your collection. Atari 2600 stuff. These are all complete in box. Crossbow and this um, actually got me thinking if it's a Zelda-esque game, but uh, the back shot, the gameplay doesn't really give any hints. Real Sports Football, Galaxian, Oh, this is not Atari. This is Zelda CDI Zelda and Link for the CDI. Another CDI game, Burn Cycle and uh, Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered, Undiscovered Country, Cosmic Arc for the Atari again, Star Master, Surround and Defender 2. So what should I pick next? Some PC games from Atari 2600, Super Nintendo, um, well, Atari 2600, and it even has some um, 2800, uh, 2800 games mixed in. Enduro, Missile Command, Space Invaders, Jungle Hunt, Millipede, Base Attack, Mega Mania, Phoenix, Ball Blazer, which is for the 8700. Uh, Clax Adventures on GX12. This is one that doesn't ring a bell for me. Has a strange label, Telegames label, so might be a rare one. ET 32 and 1, Pitfall, Double Dunk, Karateka which is also 8700, Enduro and Berserk. Then I had one more PlayStation 2 game, which I forgot to show you earlier. This came in from a trade from one of my followers on YouTube. Um, also one of the guys that won uh, uh, 
uh, won one of the contest prizes, uh, the contest I held earlier for the 2000 subscribers. And it's a nice copy of Digimon World 4 for the PlayStation 2. So now for some Nintendo stuff. I'm gonna start with my least favorite Nintendo console and I'm gonna give you a second to think about which one that is. Do you think you know me well enough? If you guessed Nintendo 64, you were right. So, uh, a couple of cartridges. Pokemon Stadium, Shadow Gate 64, Tale of the Four Towers. Zelda Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, Mario Golf. Pokemon Puzzle League, Donkey Kong 64, Super Mario 64, and another copy of Super Mario 64. Then, complete games, Paper Mario. This is in really good condition. And this is actually going to a fellow collector who is looking for a really mint copy, and this is definitely a really mint copy. Then, Mario Kart 64, 007 GoldenEye, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Mario Tennis, another copy of Mario Kart 64, and another copy of Zelda The Ocarina of Time. Before we get to the next piece, uh, which will be, let's see, PC games, first some peripherals. This is a Game Boy storage case, complete in box, and this one is actually um, often used as a bread uh, lunchbox. As you can see it has a cabinet, uh, a little placeholder for the Game Boy, a couple of cartridges and link cable. And here are some other uh, accessories that you could buy, some Game Boy um, bags, etc. So this is the storage case by ALS Industries. And then this is a Super Game Boy big box version um, for the Super Nintendo of course to play Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo. And this is a big cardboard box version, it has different released versions. Then for the PC. Time for my favorites, PC big box games. So, X-Files the game with Mulder and Scully, Might and Magic 7 for Blood and Honor, Gabriel Knight 3, Blood of the Damned, Little Big Adventure 2, again, best game of all time, and Gabriel Knight Mysteries. I only saw this set for the first time last week, bought it for my own collection, and then this week I found another one. So, what are the odds, right? Comes with the first two games and a novel about the third game. Some non-big box games, X-Files Unrestricted Access, Civilization 3, Neverwinter Nights, Diablo 2, Commandos Behind Enemy Lines, and again Might and Magic 7, but then the normal version. Uh, seventh Guest, Capitalism, and when you look at the back of this box, this is a game really for guys that love number crunching and economics, etc. This is not a game for the doctor. Planescape Torment can still consider to be the best RPG of all time and very very high up my must playlist as soon as I get a retro gaming PC and then Ultima 8 Pagan and Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Arm. The last bits of PC gaming before we get back to the world of Super Nintendo. Blitzer Flitzer which looks to be some stupid uh, paparazzi game. Then FIFA Soccer Manager which I got for free with this lot because that's not a game I normally pick up. Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Atlantis the Lost Legend, but unfortunately it's a totally Dutch version. Pools of Radiance, Ruins of Myth, Dranor, Forgotten Realms game. Heretic 2, and the last one is Baldur's Gate 1 with its expansion Tales of the Sword Coast. I promise you Super Nintendo, and when I promise I deliver. So, Street Fighter 2, Killer Instinct, Top Gear 3000, which is quite an uncommon game. The Smurfs, Starwing. Smurfs Around the World, Yoshi's Island, uh, Donkey Kong Country, Super Pang, which is also quite a rare game, Zelda Link to the Past, unfortunately this is a German version, and the last one that I'm really sneakily hiding is Super Mario RPG. A game you don't really find often here in Europe, so quite happy to have another card only copy, which is always great trade material. Great RPG. Unfortunately, one of the few, yeah, it's the only Mario RPG on a console as far as I know, because Paper Mario is kind of a different type of RPG. So now for some complete Super Nintendo games. From card-only games we go to complete games. This is, of course, Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2. Then we have Arkanoid, Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel, which is a quite hard to find game. It is a really cool platformer and this one is in really great shape as you can see. Then the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest, 
a controller, Super Nintendo controller. And I actually had never seen this box before. This is a stereo AV cable, so it's about this cable here. And it has a Euro connector plug, so that's this card plug as we call it over here. Has some strange discoloring on the back of the box, but still not a very common accessory. And as usual, I end with the blast, and the blast this time for Super Nintendo is a big box Lufia. Um, it didn't come with the guide, but the box is in really good shape. And uh, finding these big box games, which are not the best quality cardboard, in good shape is actually really, really hard. From the Super Nintendo, we take a leap forward in time to the PlayStation 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater Guide, complete and sealed and the PlayStation 3 Metal Gear Solid 4 guide also sealed. And then another PlayStation 3 item and this is in my opinion as far as I know, I should that's the better word, one of the rarest PlayStation 3 limited editions. This is the Assassin's Creed 1 limited edition and this was before the Assassin's Creed was a big mainstay series because it was the first game. It actually only comes with the normal game and a figurine and I can show you the figurine here in the back of the box. And that's pretty much all it came with. No extra downloads, no extra content, just the game and this figurine. A really rare set and I'm quite happy to find one complete because I was still missing some bits and pieces. Then two odd PC games that I forgot to show you earlier. This is Mega Man X8, also known as Rockman in Japan. And this is a PC version, which I actually didn't know existed. As you can see on the back of the box here, this is a PlayStation 2 game in Origin. And that's what the graphics look like. Uh, the game is still sealed, two discs, but the disc, uh, the, the uh, box doesn't have any inlays or something like that. Same goes for Rockman X7, and as you can see here, these um, magnetic protectors, they're really hard to get off. I tried gently peeling it off, but I don't want to ruin the box, so I'm just letting it stay on there. Here are another two items that you don't see every day and are quite strange in my opinion. Um, this says Commodore Challenging on the front. It has a whole lot of languages on the side and basically what it is, is a handheld Tetris um, multi-game. As you can see here, it's Dutch talking. I'm not sure why it should talk, but yeah, this is one of those Tetris thingies that has a hundred thousand games and basically it's all just Tetris. Then the other one is the Philips Media Interactive Encyclopedia which has a nice book and a CDI CD and it's basically just an encyclopedia on uh, CDI. And I remember back in the day, Encarta on PC was something really fun. You just browse through the encyclopedia, clicking on videos, clicking on pictures, etc. And I guess this was the CDI equivalent. We're nearing the end of the video and it's time for some more obscure old Philips stuff. This is Philips Video Pack. Super Cobra and Frogger, which were, yeah, not sure if you can say unlicensed, but they were at least different boxed. And then some of the more uncommon cardboard versions of games. This is 10-pin bowling slash baseball, American football, race, mathematician, baseball, uh, this one actually doesn't say it on the front, Paris, blackjack, air sea war, take the money and run, golf, gunfighter, cosmic conflict and the last one is marksman. Just These are just games but I also got two consoles in box but there's another Philips console that I want to show you that's not a video pack. The console I was talking about is the Philips Odyssey 2001. This predates the video pack and is basically a deluxe Pong console. As you can see on the brighter side of the box it has a couple of sports games which are basically just Pong with some extra things on the screen. Top right shows you tennis which is just Pong with a line in the middle and that other one is I probably think ice hockey which is Pong with some extra dots. Not sure if it really adds some extra value to the game because um, yeah, it's just Pong with obstacles. But with some imagination and back in the day that was probably really realistic sports gaming. The last few pieces before we end up with my collection stuff. NES games. Mario 2, Mario 3. This is a multi-card multi pirate which actually has a piece of tape so you can pull it out of the NES. And it is a multi-cartridge with... 1200 in one. These are basically uh, Famicom cards with a converter so it becomes a 72 pin game that you can play on your European or American Nintendo NES. Here's another one of these 
And this one has an obvious pirate of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. DuckTales, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Metal Gear, Turtles 2, the arcade game, DuckTales 2, 260 and 1, which is basically pretty much the same as the Famicom game I just showed, but here the converter is inside the game. So this is the part, is the converter probably, and here you have a little uh, Famicom board that's connected to it. If you have one of these cartridges and it doesn't work, click it open and fix the contacts or fix the connection because sometimes with some shaking etc those connections um, they get open and uh, it doesn't connect anymore so it doesn't play. The Guardian Legend, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, Pro Protector which is the European version of Contra and Double Dragon 3. Then the complete games, Tetris, Mario and Yoshi, Mega Man 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, the classic series edition, has a different front cover. Super Mario Bros. 3, the normal version. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. NES cleaning kit. And this last one is the original Grey Zapper, complete in box. This Grey Zapper got phased out for the orange one because this one resembled a real gun too much. Does that look like a real gun to you? Not to me, but maybe in the 80s it did. Finally, the apotheosis of this video, and before I show you the games that end up in my collection, I'm going to show you this. This is the bronze prize that I earned as the third best Dutch YouTuber retro channel, awarded by ButtonBashers.nl, which is a weekly podcast by and for retro gamers. So this is my first official recognition as a YouTuber, and I'm really happy with it. Check out the video they did on the convention and where they award me this prize. So, the games. I said last week that I thought I had all Battletoads games, well I was missing this one and I'm still missing the Game Gear version, but I'm not sure I want that because I don't really collect Game Gear. This is Battletoads for the Sega Mega Drive which is basically the same version as the NES as it looks on the back of the box. Maybe the graphics were pimped a little bit, probably the colors, but it doesn't look too different. Then for the Sega uh, Dreamcast, Lodos Record of War which is an RPG. And then some PC games, The Bard's Tale 3, Thief of Fate, and just check out how awesome this looks. These are the two diskettes or floppies, and this game was unprotected, so you could copy these, but in order to play the game you needed this wheel to uh, turn the wheel at whatever showed the screen, the screen showed, and then you'd have to fill in the code here or there, and uh, that kind of made them uh, know if you had the real game and if you were allowed to play. Then Wizardry Nemesis, the Wizardry Adventure, Ultima 9, which is Ultima Ascension, and the last one is Blood and Magic, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. This is a really old uh, strategy RPG, as you can see here on the gameplay. Looks like Super Nintendo Age kind of gameplay and graphics, and it's a really nice addition to my PC RPG collection. So that was it for this week, it was a long video because of all the things that came in from this week and the convention, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. Be sure to check out my other videos, like me on Facebook, check out everything on www.dr-retro.com and of course, see you next time. Bye bye.